I guess stars are beautiful if, if that's your thing, if you are easily distracted by shiny objects, perhaps a magpie. I mean, if, if shapes and colors are your thing, then look at the stars. But if you have any wonder at all, it's the gaps in between. That's where it's really interesting. There could be anything there. It's blacker than black is what, how astronauts describe this space, a three-dimensional blackness. I think we should have a look into the space. But first, we'll need to build a space telescope. And we'll need to start at the start. This is quite far back. <laughs> early, early man, this is, this is a flint hand axe. Early man used to use it. Very popular. It was very, very popular. It was, it was the Facebook of its time. <laughs> People would use it to carve their status on walls and uh, uh, stalk their prey. And um, this was very popular for a while. And then 10,000 years later, about someone put a handle on it. Right? which means that people use it like this and didn't put a handle on it for 10,000 years. So that seems really obvious. It's a much more useful tool now. But it took ages, and it's just giant leap, but it, it doesn't come so obviously. And space has kind of leaps as going as well. Space, has, space exploration hasn't been around for that long. That's first powered flight in 1903, uh, the Wright brothers. And between that and putting a man on the moon, it's in 1969, so there's only 66 years. So going from no way to fly at all to put something on the, on the moon is 66 years. Uh, so pretty much what we did is we took a biplane, and we attached a handle, <laughs> and we got a giant rocket. <laughs> and I'm an engineer, and that's my job. My job is to put handles on things. Um, <laughs> so the, the, how space has got so, so big so quickly. So just go back to Paraflight. There's people who are alive when, so the oldest man in the world is 115 years old. He's still alive. He was alive before the Paraflight, alive when they put a man on the moon. And now, today, if you have 250,000 euro or dollars, you can book a, a seat on, on this uh, Virgin Atlantic thing. You can go into, into orbit. So that's where we are. And like, 250,000 dollars is a lot of money. It's not like you could have just given up one thing in your life and you would have 250,000 dollars, just one, one small thing. So the cost of raising a child in Ireland is about <laughs> 200,000 euro, about 250,000 dollars. So, for the cost of your firstborn, you could now <laughs> go to space. <laughs> so it's quite a leap. So Ireland does, we're part of, of European Space Agency. All those countries are part of European Space Agency. You give about four euro each in taxes, which goes to Space Agency, and then they give it back in contracts, and people like me work on projects. So there are a lot of people, you think that we're not involved at all, but if you look at little pictures of rockets, you'll see the little Irish flag uh, on them too. So there's, there's a lot of space work in Ireland. Uh, what I do is I, I work in, over in engineering. People always ask me what I do. It's kind of hard to explain, so I, I, I made this slide first. So I worked about repositioning satellites. This is what I've been doing for the last two years. Uh, so that's me. So we kind of just <laughs> poke it around. It's, it's not exactly like that. We use a, that, that broom isn't long enough. Um, <laughs> we use a slightly longer broom. <coughs> so uh, I've been doing that. But that's, this, and that's kind of work I'm going to talk about now. But um, we, very exciting. Yesterday, we kicked off a new contract, and we're going to be working on We've got proper rocket science. We're going to be working on, on, on launchers. Uh, so I haven't decided. I'm trying to decide how the slide should look. I think it's some sort of clipboard uh, kind of thing. And I don't know. Rocket science has got this kind of thing that's it's kind of hard. Um, but I, I we don't really know yet. I, maybe I'll come back in two years and tell you. Is it a rocket? Uh, yes, that's a rocket. Uh, is that a rocket? No, that's a Terry's chocolate orange. Um, <laughs> so I, I kind of imagine this is how it's going to be. Um, <laughs> so why? We want to see the, the gaps from the start. So. Uh, can we look from, from Earth? We, we can build telescopes on Earth. You know, we, we do that. Um, but there's problems in, in, in looking through it. So twinkle, twinkle, little star. The atmosphere, stars don't twinkle if you're out in space. So its atmosphere makes everything a little bit blurry. Uh, and especially blocks out certain wavelengths of, of light. Um, so, so you have visible light and x-rays and infrared. And everything knows about light. I mean, light's a bit like a chocolate orange, right? So you, you can see light as a, a series of particles. So that's individual pieces of chocolate orange uh, coming out like that. You also, and equally uh, as valid, you can think of it as a wave when it's continuous, <laughs> continuous pieces of kind of chocolate orange forming <laughs> a kind of light wave. Um, uh, and if you think of it as a, as a wave, it's probably easiest. Then the wavelength is just the kind of peaks between two chocolate orange segment peaks or chocolate orange segment troughs, uh, and that, that gives us color, as, as you might know. So if the wavelengths are close together, you get blues, and if they're far apart, uh, you get reds. And if they're even smaller than blue, you get uh, you know, ultraviolet and, and, and infrared, and you get the x-rays and radio waves. So it's all just ch chocolate orange. 
Um, so <laughs> you uh, can say, so that's what we have there. And you see that in some parts of the, of the spectrum, you, you block out this, this light. So if we put our telescopes up in space, uh, then they get a kind of clear picture of everything. And getting a picture in all these different wavelengths just gives us a, a better idea. So this, these are all pictures. It's the Crab Nebula. Uh, it's all the same thing but taken in different light. So in visible light, we see the dust. It kind of gets trapped in this beautiful picture. Uh, so Crab Nebula is kind of this exploding star. Um, and it's kind of swirling inside. But if you look at the X-ray, you can kind of see the swirls. And then radio gives us all different information. So it's kind of different energies coming off the stars. So it's kind of a, a way of taking uh, pictures of the same thing, but, but getting d different information. Uh, so first rule of uh, building a space telescope is take the lens off. Um, <laughs> The, the second rule is you have to get it up there, uh, and that's by it, you have to attach it to a rocket. So you buy a rocket, and then you, you it's a, so it's a camera. You kind of just you tape it on. So it usually goes on the top in the payload. Um, uh, so I have a telescope. It's very like a, like a camera telescope is. Uh, so usually the problem is a rocket is, is very uh, lots of energy. If you want to see a rocket launch, you need to stay about five kilometers away, or if the wind blows, your face kind of stays like the same. So you've kind of. Uh, you need to go down. So lots of energy, and obviously, if you take the things and start shaking it, they, they start to break. So we do lots of testing on the ground to make sure that uh, these cameras and stuff can can, uh, can withstand the vibrations. So this is uh, over in ESA. There's a, a space structure on top. It kind of looks like those people are just shaking it, but it's actually on a shaker, uh, which is, uh, it kind of goes through all different frequencies and makes sure that if you put it on a rocket and put it up into space, when it gets there, it actually works. Um, also, we need to pack it. If you're really good at packing your case, you should give ESA a call because <laughs> we need to find you. So these telescopes are quite big, but the rockets are quite small. So they kind of get folded up, kind of origami size, uh, to kind of fit in the rocket like that. And then when they get up there, they, they spread out. So that's how you kind of get it up there. This was International X-ray Observatory, which I, I was working on. This is kind of idea of, of what it is. It's a big, long structure, 20 meters long. Uh, so you get up there, how do you move it about? Uh, so you, you were looking at something, or you want to look at the gaps. You're looking at a star, and you go, that's terrible. I want to look at a gap in between. Uh, how do you move it around? So on Earth, you'd push off something. So if, if I want to jump, I just push off the ground, and I jump. A uh, plane pushes off the air, and the pressures make it go up. Tire on the ground, push it off the road. Uh, there's no roads or tires uh, up, up in space. So um, we need to think of other ways of making these things move around the way we want. Um, so I take as my default example of what a, uh, of a, a telescope or a spacecraft is, is, is an office chair, which is quite a good model. We're going to find out. So an office chair, if you're next time you're on your chair, think of it as a spacecraft. Does it, <laughs> how about now? Does it look more like a, <laughs> what about that? That's, that kind of looks a bit like a spacecraft. So it's quite good because you can move in, in, into translational axes and, and you can spin around as well. So it takes, it's not a complete spacecraft, but it's, it's quite like that. So um, <laughs> one way of, of moving spacecraft is, which you might, is thrusters. Um, so you get a gas or uh, you, you, you propel it out uh, and it goes around. The problem with that, it, it does work. Uh, the problem is that you need to bring all that fuel up and then there's no, there's no petrol stations in, in space and stuff. So you, when you run out, you're gone. Um, so we do that, but we, we not, not exactly for this X-ray telescope. So I got a video, I got to step into the gap to, to play it. Um, so this is the way we, d we actually, we actually worked, um, oh, that's got left. Uh, we, we actually worked <laughs> on moving these things around. So these guys, uh, they're on their spacecraft rocket chairs, and as you uh, want to move around, if you're, if you're on the chair and you try to move, you can't go and propel yourself at all. You just can't move because your legs are off the ground. So this guy gets a giant wheel and then spins it up uh, with his rail. So the momentum of the spinning wheel gets transferred onto the, the, the rocket chair and uh, that makes you speed. So it's kind of like you're playing snooker, that's linear momentum. One ball hits another ball and the other ball goes off. If you spin up the disc, then that momentum can get transferred to something else like your spacecraft and move it around. They're looking so much fun on their, their chairs there. Um, you with static chairs, life is not fair, is it? <laughs> so, uh, and that's how we move. The actually real things, it, this is a reaction wheel which it goes, gets put on the spacecraft. It is basically that a giant wheel, this time the motor is built inside it uh, and it spins around and spins around the spacecraft. So that's how we go and move from one place to another while in space. So I said that cameras are very like telescope, uh, telescopes, telescopes like cameras. Uh, 
but they're very long, they're 20 meters, so like a big paparazzi camera. You try to look miles away, so you need to have this big focal length of, of, of 20 meters. Um, the problem is, to get stuff into space, it has to be light, and if it's light, it's flexible. Uh, so when you move it from one place to another, it starts to vibrate and it shakes. Um, and when it shakes, you know what happens. So you're taking a <laughs> camera phone, you get this blurry picture, and we don't want a blurry picture uh, of, of the sky. Again, it's a big problem in space. Here, if you're in a in the pub, you might just put your camera on a table or something like that, and you stabilize it. No tables in space. So we need to find a, a solution. So that's just mainly what, where we've been working on it. We'd make mathematical models of these spacecraft, so that's the multi-body model of, of that X-ray observatory that you saw, and then we try to apply a control, some way of moving this from one place to another without cr causing vibrations. Um, so we work here on stuff called wave-based control, this idea of sending a wave into the system, so disturbing our system as we move it, and then when it comes back, we absorb all that energy, so when it gets there, it stays still and takes pretty pictures. So this is the telescope. This is the most famous telescope up there. That's Hubble. Um, Hubble's really good. So it's a general purpose t microscope or telescope. And it's been uh, taking lots of pictures, lots of nice desktop backgrounds and stuff that you've seen <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you'll know where I'm from. So, uh, but my favorite thing that it did one time, it decided that we'll stop looking at these things. What if we pick a piece of sky which has really nothing in it? So a real dim piece of sky that has no stars and look at the gaps in between and take, they took a really long exposure. So they picked a tiny little gap. So there's a little, a little square beside the moon. So a piece of sky that was really, really boring, uh, and they said, well, what's in there? They took a 23-day exposure. So every time they came around, they took a, took a picture of it, and they say, what's in there? And everything was in there. So this is the Hubble Deep Field, Extreme Deep Fields. There's 10,000 objects in there. Each one of them is a galaxy, or most of them are galaxies, which means they have millions of stars inside them. Many of them will have planets. One of them might have a TEDx going on. <laughs> So when you look at a place and you see nothing, there's absolutely, there's always loads of stuff in there. So uh, it's always worth looking in the gaps. You thought the stars were good, look at that. Um, and this is the next stage, that's the James Webb Telescope. So we had Hubble's been up for a while. The next one's gonna be James Webb, and it's gonna give you even better desktop background pictures. <laughs> they look back and they'll see more galaxies and it's gonna go up in, in, in 2018. Uh, its mirror is, is, is kind of made of chocolate orange, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Is a honeycomb kind of thing. I, it, yeah, it's stupid. Okay, let's go on. Uh, it's my second favorite photo. This, this is, so I, I have done stuff with, with kind of Mars rovers, but this is a, a picture taken from a camera on the robot on Mars, uh, looking back at Earth, uh, which is kind of cool to think that we have uh, things like that. Hashtag selfie. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I'll leave you with that. I encourage you to look into the gaps and to attach handles to things. Thanks very much. Thank you.